Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and this is my special Joe Fest vlog. I've been home from Joe Fest for a few days. Uh, I've had some time to think about it and process it, and I wanted to get something up so I could talk to you about Joe Fest. For those who don't know, Joe Fest was a two-day convention, really more of a day and a half convention, in Augusta, Georgia, on June 21st and 22nd. Um, it is not an official Hasbro G.I. Joe convention. Hasbro does not have Joe Con anymore, but Ed Schumacher has been organizing for the last couple of years Joe Fest. Um, it's been in Augusta, Georgia for the last two years. I, this is the first year that I went. Uh, my understanding it is it is much expanded from its first year. And so it was quite an experience. I'd have to say it is one of my best experiences at a G.I. Joe convention. And I've been to five Joe Cons, and I love Joe Con, um, and I really lo loved the last Joe Con in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, Joe Fest is a little bit of a different experience. It's a bit more fan focused than Joe Con was. Joe Fest doesn't have like the official Hasbro convention exclusive figures and stuff. Uh, although there were exclusive figures there, and I'm going to show some to you, but um, it was more focused on on the fans and just uh, getting people together and and um, and enjoying GI Joe, along with a lot of the creators like Larry Hama, Kirk Bozigian, uh, Ron Rudat. They were all there. Sergeant Slaughter was there. Uh, the voice actor for Storm Shadow and Dial Tone, they were there from the animated series. Um, and lots of fan creators were there, comic book artists. Um, and so it was more like a, of a, a big fan gathering than just like a, a way to grab exclusives. So I have always gone to JoeCon for uh, the people, to meet people. And what was great about Joe Fest is a lot of the Joe Con people were there. You know, the friends that you only see once a year, they were there. Uh, so it, it felt kind of like Joe Con, but in some ways better. That's really where I come down on it. I, I just feel uh, that Joe Fest was a fantastic experience. Um, I hope to be invited next year. Um, but um, I do have to give you an apology. Normally for JoeCon, I would do a whole travel video where I would have video of me traveling to the convention and video of the dealer floor and the contests and all that. Uh, but I don't have that for you this time. Uh, I tried, but a couple of things kind of got in the way. First of all, they gave me a table, right? So I actually had a table that I needed to occupy, and so I wasn't as free to, you know, go around, see the whole show, and go to each vendor, and you know, go meet all of the artists. Um, at least, you know, when I wanted to, uh, I needed to occupy my table. Uh, and at the table, I was very busy. Uh, which is great. I mean, being busy at the table means I got to meet a lot of people. And that's what I was there for. And my concern, of course, was that they would give me a table and nobody would show up. And I would just be sitting there, you know, lonely and just without anything to do because nobody really knows who I am. That was not the case at all. A lot of people came to the table. A lot of people uh, said hello. Uh, I talked with a lot of you guys. Thank you to everyone who came to the table. Um, I appreciated that so much. Uh, it was so great to meet all of you. Um, I, I had some artwork for sale. Uh, I sold a lot of artwork, much more than I was expecting. Uh, I mean, the, and there were like published comic book artists there, great comic book artists. Um, and some people actually bought my stuff. Actually, a lot of people bought my artwork. Uh, so that was a surprise. I had secret code books to give away, and so I gave away a lot of those. Um, I had my videos actually playing um, at my table, uh, and a ton of people showed up. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and talking with me. Um, now, being busy, though, means that I can't just 
walk away. I can't just go and, you know, explore. Um, and so I didn't really have very much time to go, like, in the artist's room. Um, uh, I did get to meet Sergeant Slaughter, uh, but that was, like, in the like the last hour of the show the show was almost over and i finally was able to break f free with with mrs hcc and go meet sergeant slaughter i've got some stuff to show you from when we met sergeant slaughter but yeah a lot of the uh of like the gi joe creators were there kirk bazigian uh, larry hama uh, ron rudat uh, you had voice actors from the animated series, Storm Shadow, Dial Tone. You had comic book artists there. Um, it was um, just an amazing gathering of fans and creators and just people who remember and still love G.I. Joe. And it was a privilege to me uh, to be there. I didn't really want to give you a travel video. I've been doing that every year. It's kind of a tradition. However, if they invite me back next year, I've got some ideas. I think I can do things differently, which will give me a little more freedom, and I'll, I'll get you some more video next year. I absolutely will. After, you know, after the convention, I hung out with a lot of you guys at the hotel bar. Thanks for everyone uh, for you know, just showing up and hanging out. That kind of in-person interaction is what I always loved about JoeCon. And uh, I love the interaction we have here, you know, online and on the YouTube channel and the live streams. But there's just no substitute for meeting someone in person. Um, so thanks everyone who hung out with me. It was a thrill. Um, I had a panel. Uh, there was a little bit of a hitch with the panel because I didn't have audio video equipment to use. They had a projector. I could not use the projector. I tried to. It didn't quite work. Um, but I still gave my presentation. It was just mainly me talking. But um, I was able to show uh, the debut of uh, the Cobra Convergence video, which is now up for everyone to see. The first place to see it was at Joe Fest. They had to squeeze us in uh, between the top secret panel, the super secret panel that was invite only, uh, and then like an hour later they were going to have the belly dancers. So we had to fit between the super secret panel and the belly dancers. We had to be out of there before those belly dancers showed up. Uh, that, they looked like a rough crowd and I wasn't going to mess with them. So, you know, we had to kind of do the short version of the panel. But it, I, I think I got across mostly everything that I wanted to say. So thank you to everyone who was supportive and showed up at the panel. Um, I did put a video of the panel up so you can see that. Um, and I wanted everybody to understand what I meant when I said the belly dancers are coming. That was real. That was not a joke. There were real belly dancers. One thing that was a surprise was meeting Michael French from Retro Blasting. Uh, Retro Blasting was in Cobra Convergence last year. They're going to be in Cobra Convergence this year. And um, there was an amazing number of Cobra Convergence people there that I was able to meet in person. That was crazy. I mean, Plastic Battles and uh, Special Mission Force uh, and Retro Blasting. And, uh, like, we had, like, a, a room full of, uh, of, of Cobra Convergence people there together. That's... That was mind-blowing. But yeah, um, I was just, you know, getting ready for the panel, and I looked down the hallway, and there's Michael French. So, you know, I immediately got security to see if they could escort that guy out. No, I didn't really. Uh, it was actually really cool to meet him. He's very nice. Um, and we hung out together after the show. Uh, we went out to dinner uh, with him and Kickley. By the way, Kickley, uh, the comic book artist, also in Cobra Convergence, and what an amazing guy that is. A great artist and just a really down-to-earth guy. So fun to hang out with and talk to. Uh, and so he went to dinner with us and, and like Michael and some of his friends. I did get some things from Joe Fest and I will show you those things. But first I want to show you the best thing I took home with me from Joe Fest. And that is this. This I put at my table. And it's basically just said, sign my Joe Fest 2019 card. Because I wanted everyone's autograph, not the, not the, the special guests. I wanted all the people, everyone who came by 
uh, to my table and met me and said hello, I wanted your signature on this souvenir Joe Fest card so that I can keep this forever and always remember everyone who came to me and said hello. And uh, this thing, we filled it up. Filled it up with tons of signatures and I love this. Uh, I, I will uh, keep this, I may, I may frame this and put this on a wall because this is special to me because this represents you, right? This represents the people. They are what's really important. Um, and so thank you if you signed this. Uh, if you didn't sign it, well, I am going to make this an annual tradition. Uh, I will have one of these with me next year. And so just make it next year. Come next year and sign my Joe Fest card. Now let me show you some things that uh, people gave to me at Joe Fest. Let's start with Sergeant Slaughter because we did meet Sergeant Slaughter. Susan and I both met Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, we got some pictures with him. I will put the pictures on the screen right now. Uh, he put me in the Cobra Clutch. It was fantastic. Uh, he's a super nice guy. Um, and uh, I, I'm glad that we were able to meet him before the show was over. Um, yeah, it was maybe within the last hour of the show that we finally was it, it, were able to get over to his table and meet him. And I got some things signed. Um, I, he signed this picture with the uh, Triple T tank. And uh, he signed t-shirts for us. And I love these t-shirts. Uh, this one is Susan's t-shirt and uh, this one this one is mine and he did sign it he did sign it HCC 788 if you ever have a chance to meet Sergeant Slaughter uh, go meet him. Now let's look at some of the stuff I got from Eric Amon because he gave me a lot of stuff. He was one of the winners of the uh, hammer. When I gave away the four hammer shells and parts uh, in the live stream, he won one of those and so I just brought it with me and I gave it to him at Joe Fest. Well he gave me a lot of stuff uh, including some alcoholic uh, adult beverages, which I can't really show you because I've already, you know, drank some of those. But uh, thank you, Eric, for that. Uh, the Wisconsin beer was pretty good. I liked the Wisconsin beer. I'm going to have to get more of it. Susan tried it, and she liked it. So now I really got to find more of it because, you know, she doesn't normally like beer, and, and we found a beer that she likes. So, um, so he gave me uh, a couple of things. Uh, he gave me this... Um, this hoodie, this um, this hodag hoodie, um, and it, I'm, I'm pretty sure that a hodag is a real thing. I haven't found any yet, but uh, I'm hitting my local uh, pet shops to see if I can find one. And then he gave me a custom figure, and I'm going to change the camera angle because I want to, you to see this close up. This is a custom action figure of me. Uh, with a whole card and everything with it uh, and a complete file card. Uh, I am going to take this out so you can see it. Um, but uh, yeah, this is just an amazing amount of effort. Um, this is something that Eric commissioned for me. Um, and he also commissioned some uh, custom figures for Larry Hama and Kirk Bozigian as well. Uh, but uh, that is amazing. A totally uh, modern figure, a custom of HCC 788. Uh, now you might be saying that, uh, hey, that's a modern figure. You review uh, vintage O-ring figures. Well, hey, I got an O-ring custom of me too from Green Yeti. And we're going to look at that as well. This, is, Both of these are completely, totally awesome. I'm going to take this um, out of the box and show it to you. So there is the modern custom figure of me. It's got the green G.I. Joe shirt that I wear sometime. It's got my blue jeans. Uh, it's got a Venom laser pistol, which, you know, I do have a full-size Venom laser pistol uh, because one was sent to me. Um, it has a laptop, totally appropriate because I do edit my videos on a laptop. He's even got my Nikes there. Uh, and it comes with a 
uh, green hooded Cobra Commander head. Um, and that's an amazing coincidence. I mean, this, uh, I could pop off this head and put this one on, uh, but you don't often see the hooded Cobra Commander in green. Uh, but um, this actually is very fitting with another custom that I got, and I'm going to show you that later. Uh, but um, yeah, so that's not a bad likeness of me. I mean, you got my uh, my beard, and the, they got kind of the, the lighter gray in my hair on top of the uh, the darker color. Um, so uh, yeah, this this is mind blowing. This is just an amazing custom. Thank you very much, Eric. But this is not the only custom action figure of me that I got at Joe Fest. This is an O-ring custom figure of me given to me by Green Yeti. You know Green Yeti, he shows up uh, in the live stream and uh, in the comments and stuff. Uh, and so we know Green Yeti, he's a friend of the channel. And this is just so cool. So, uh, and you know I'm very partial to O-ring figures and I've gotta say, that's a really good likeness. I, I want it to focus, there we go. That's a really good likeness, uh, you got my beard. Uh, you got uh, you, you managed to get like that lighter bit of uh, gray I have in the front. You know, I've had gray hair since I was in my 20s. Um, but uh, so, you know, I've got these patches of gray in my hair and you captured that so well. Um, and of course, I like this Cobra Commander uniform. It's quite regal. Um, with the Venom laser pistol, um, as appropriate, again, I do have one in real life. Very appropriate that a custom figure of me uh, include the uh, Venom laser pistol from Cobra Commander. Uh, so that's amazing. It includes the uh, Cobra Commander uh, card and a letter from Green Yeti here. Uh, so uh, Evan, thank you very much. Uh, this is very special to me. I think it's great. Uh, I love it. Um, I love that you did it with O-rings, and I love that you you captured my likeness. That's awesome. And also, thank you, Green Yeti, for coming in and talking with me. I I'm glad that you were able to make it. So thanks. Thanks for coming to my table. Thanks for talking to me, and just uh, thanks for being very supportive of the channel. Uh, and I'm glad you're, you're enjoying G.I. Joe, and I hope you continue to enjoy it. And thank you very much for this. Remember I said it was an amazing coincidence that Eric's custom figure of me included a green hood. Well, here's another custom I was given at Joe Fest, and it is a green Cobra Commander. And this figure comes from Don Cohen. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, uh, but Don sent me a private message a while back asking me to pick from um, among several different color schemes. He didn't say what it was for. He asked me to pick one, and this is the one that I picked. And so he made a Cobra Commander figure in that color scheme. And I have to say, I like it. You don't often see Cobra Commander in green. I think for obvious reasons, green is more associated with G.I. Joe, but he looks good in green. And, you know, Don and Eric, they didn't coordinate. They didn't talk about it beforehand. They didn't plan this. But somehow, both of them came up with the idea of doing a green hooded Cobra Commander. Uh, so this is awesome. It's an amazing figure. Now, you may be sitting there at home saying to yourself, Hey there, hooded Cobra Commander 788. You're a fan of O-ring G.I. Joe action figures. Well, Don knew this, of course, and he made an O-ring custom of the same figure. Uh, that's just incredible. There you go. Modern and vintage style uh, in green and uh, uh, matching the custom figure that uh, Eric gave me. Uh, just th That's amazing. Thank you so much for this, Don. Uh, this is incredible. Great work here and very much appreciated. Thank you. I got these items from two different people at Joe Fest and I can't thank them by name because I did not catch the names of the people who gave them to me and I apologize for that. Uh, if you gave me these things at Joe Fest, please send me a message so I can thank you again for them. I was given the 30th anniversary Action Sailor and Action Soldier, uh, and another guy gave me the 1994 Black Star figure, a figure I did not have. So this helps me uh, fill a gap in the collection and uh, get something closer to being ready to review. Uh, so that's very important to me. That really helps me out. 
And so thank you for doing that. Uh, these are both great. Um, I have considered that I may go ahead and review these uh, kind of 30th anniversary kind of throwback figures uh, that they did, these commemorative figures. Um, I am intrigued by them. I'm interested in them, so I may uh, eventually do a review on those. Um, so thank you for these. Now we're going to look at some Joe Fest exclusives. These are not official Hasbro releases, but they are custom figures that were exclusive to Joe Fest. And this one was given to me with the expectation that I will open it and review it. So you can expect a review on this figure. Uh, I haven't opened it yet though. For now, it's still sealed in the bag. Uh, and this is from Scorched Earth Creations and Level 7, and this is the Unmasked Commando, uh, done in the style of Snake Eyes with his mask off and with some excellent sculpting and paintwork showing his scars, uh, and that's just incredible. It comes with an alternate head and his weapons and everything, uh, and uh, it has a custom file card as well. Uh, this, I mean, I haven't taken it out of the package yet. I, I can see what it looks like, and it looks amazing. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting this on camera and doing uh, a more close-up review of it. So thank you for this. Um, this is an amazing custom. And if you're going to go to Joe Fest, if you want to get the exclusives, this is the kind of thing that you can expect to see. Uh, these sold out, and my understanding is they sold out very quickly. Um, and I can understand why it's just a really superbly done figure. This is another Joe Fest exclusive, The Traitor by Broca Customs. And this one is a loner. This belongs to Stuart, and so this is one I need to review, but then I will return it to its owner. Uh, so I wanted to show this to you, and this is another one where I will uh, give you a more close-up review in the future. This is called The Traitor because it's based on Dusty from a couple episodes of the animated series where he was temporarily a traitor to Cobra, uh, and it's got a custom head on it, really excellent sculpting and uh, paintwork. Uh, it's got an alternative head, it's got a stand, it's got a pistol and a backpack. Uh, it has, this is not a typical Cobra soldier uniform. Uh, this is a special uniform. It's all custom uh, and it just looks really nice and a cool um, kind of uh, tribute to some popular episodes of the animated series. So uh, I'm not going to put this on the stand. I don't want to take any risk of breaking this figure. I'm going to be very cautious with it. Um, and I will get this on camera in the future um, close up so you can see it. Uh, but um, really nice uh, custom figure and another exclusive to Joe Fest. One figure I'm going to show you that I don't have in front of me is the figure from the custom class. They had a custom class this year where you could build a custom figure and uh, Bart Simon, uh, who has been a friend of G.I. Joburg and a friend of this channel, and I was able to meet him uh, at Joe Fest, really cool guy. He went to the custom class, he did the custom figure, and he let me get some video footage of the figure uh, so that I can do a more in-depth uh, video about it. So that's another Joe Fest video that you will be getting. Uh, I'll be doing um, a special video about the custom figure and looking at it, you know, close up, and also talking about the experience of the custom class, uh, at least as uh, as Bart reports it. So thank you to Bart for letting me get some video of that custom, uh, and I will be showing that to you more later. As you may know. I'm a big fan of The Finest, the G.I. Joe cosplay group. Uh, I know some people in that group. Uh, they're awesome people. And they gave me a couple things. They gave me, first of all, a patch that says HCC 788 on it. They made a patch for me. Uh, that is so cool. Um, I am going to find something to put this patch on. I will create something just so I can wear this patch. Uh, an awesome custom patch from The Finest. And that's not the only thing they gave me. They also gave me this t-shirt. And it has The Finest on the back. Capital Defense Regiment on the front. And just 
just lovely. Just a beautiful t-shirt. I love this. And, and I really like the guys from The Finest. They uh, do great charity work. Uh, they've got some great, great people uh, in that uh, group and they do some awesome cosplay and so to have them give me a shirt was a special honor uh, thank you to the finest now I can show you a few things I got for myself I didn't get very much really I only got three things because I barely had any time to shop I was so busy you know usually at JoeCon I would get a lot of stuff and I would review that stuff for the rest of the year. Uh, not so much this time, but I did get a few things, and uh, one of those special things is the 1993 Ghost Striker. Uh, I already have the pilot. It didn't have the pilot, so that's okay. Uh, but it's got all of its missiles and the often missing tail fin uh, and nose cone. Uh, and this is nice. This is a jet that I have been looking for for quite some time. Um, been trying to nail this down. I often find it missing pieces, so it's nice to actually get it intact. Uh, so this will be a great addition to the collection, and eventually, of course, it will end up uh, on the show in a review. So. There is the 1993 Ghost Striker. This next one may interest some people. I got the 1991 Brawler. Uh, this big old tank from 1991 with orange bits. Um, it is, it's complete. It's got like the uh, breakaway panel there. Uh, but uh, there it is. This is another 90s vehicle that I've been needing to nail down. Uh, really, the biggest gaps in my collection are with 90s vehicles. So, you know, when I can find them and they're affordable, I, I try to get them when I can. So, uh, yeah, there's the Brawler. That may interest some people because I know there are a few Brawler fans out there. Uh, so that'll be one that will be reviewed eventually. And uh, I only got one other thing. That one other thing is the 1993 Ninja Force Ninja Lightning. Uh, it is with the box. The box is uh, open. It's not a sealed box, but the contents inside are still sealed. They've never been uh, put together. It has never been assembled. Uh, this is another thing that I've been wanting to nail down, not because I love the Ninja Lightning motorcycle, uh, but because uh, I want to assemble this on camera because two other G.I. Joe channels have tried to put this thing together on camera and both of them have broken it. Uh, Sanitarium Productions and G.I. Joeberg have both uh, broken the front fork while uh, trying to assemble the front wheel. And so I'm going to see what techniques I can use to uh, get this thing assembled hopefully without breaking it that's been my goal uh, ever since I saw the other two guys try to do it um, I want to try it I want to see if I can do it and maybe I will be the first G.I. Joe YouTuber to successfully assemble a Ninja Lightning on camera so yeah so that's what this is for this will be in an assembly video in the future so that's all the stuff i got at joe fest but that that's just the tangible stuff the stuff i really got from joe fest was the experiences and what a great experience it, it was i mean it wasn't perfect there were some uh, hiccups with the panel and the uh, the equipment and stuff like that but uh those things can all be ironed out um the expectation is a we'll do it next year and uh, I'm hoping to be invited back next year. If I am invited, I will go, definitely. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great experience and the best part of the experience was meeting all of you uh, and I hope we can do it again next year. If you didn't make it, if you didn't make it this year, try to make it next year. I know that it's not easy. Uh, I know not everybody can travel. Not everybody ha can get the time away from work. I understand. And if you if you can't make it because you need to take care of your other responsibilities, take uh, take care of your other responsibilities. Right? You always have to take care of real life first. But if you can make it, uh, please try to make it. I want to meet you. I want you to have this experience for yourself, um, the kind of experience you'll take with you for a long time, making new friends, uh, friends that you will keep with you for a long time. 
these are the things that it's really about. Uh, more so than getting toys, it's about the people. So thank you for making it a great experience for me. I hope this will uh, be satisfactory for a Joe Fest video. I really wanted to do a whole travel video for it, uh, but this is the best I could do because I was just so busy having great experiences. So you can expect to see a few videos of the stuff that I showed you, some things that will be broken out into separate uh, short review videos. Uh, but other than that, uh, this kind of wraps up my Joe Fest uh, coverage and comments. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone who was there uh, and hopefully I'll get to meet all of you next year. And until the next Joe Fest, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.